Welcome to your YouTube channel. God bless you. You are about to listen to a message from the channel of the Almighty God in the lips of a pastor. Your blessings await you as you listen and pray along. For any inquiry, partnership, and prayers, please check our YouTube page for contacts as you click the select icon. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified on upcoming videos. And do not forget to share. God bless you. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you because you are the mighty God. We pray, Lord, as we look at your words today, you touch every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know that you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Today, we shall be looking at answering the call of the Almighty God, part 94, with a subtitle, The Warm Reception for a Called Minister. The Warm Reception for a Called Minister. Our references from 1 Samuel 9, verse 23 and verse 24. In verse 23, And Samuel said unto the cook, Bring the portion which I gave thee, of which I said unto thee, Set it by thee. And the cook took up the shoulder, and that which was upon it, and set it before Saul. And Samuel said, Behold that which is left, set it before thee, and eat for thee. Unto this time had it been kept for thee, since I said, I have invited the people. So, so did it was Samuel that day. The Holy Spirit wishes to minister to us in two dimensions. Dimension number one, the old minister's attitude to the younger minister. Dimension number two, the old ministerial attention to the yearning minister. Dimension number one, the old minister's attitude to the younger minister. If you look at that verse closely, and Samuel said unto the cook, Bring the portion which I gave thee, of which I said unto thee, set it by thee. Now we understand that every profession has two major categories. As regards proficiency and practice, if you look at anything, either in the educational institution, in the industries, every profession, if you look at the proficiency and practice, you will see two major categories clearly stated. Number one, the old and the new either an old student or a new student, either an old professor or a new professor, either an old person or a new person or personality or personnel in that industry. We could also rephrase them as the elderly and the young. We can also better rephrase them as the experienced and the inexperienced or the matured and the neophyte. Everything in life, either in a family or in marriage, you will see the matured and then the neophyte, the experienced or the inexperienced, either pastoral. And you'll see the experienced pastor and the inexperienced pastor. Oh, how I look at the prophet or the seer, you will see the experienced seer and the inexperienced seer. That is like you will see the matured Christian and the neophyte Christian. You will see the old Christian or the new Christian. Now, Professor Samuel was the old, experienced, matured, or elderly minister. Why Saul at this time? was the oncoming prophet that the Almighty God called into the office of the higher calling. Now, we're looking at this time now, we're looking at this in the present tense, that at this point in time we are studying that Saul had not been anointed yet as king over Israel. Saul has not been anointed yet as a minister to administer unto his people. He was a minister that was upcoming, but Samuel, Samuel was an experienced minister, Samuel was the old minister, Samuel was the elderly minister. Professor Samuel had been earlier informed, as we are aware, by the Almighty God about Saul, and he was preparing to anoint him in order to encourage him or equip him ahead of the tax. But we understand that the elderly Professor Samuel had taken out time to care for the physical needs of Saul. After we shall understand, because after caring for the physical needs, there were other steps that he took. Now, what do we learn from the attitude of old Prophet Samuel? Because it's very instructive to us today. When we relate with upcoming ministers, when we relate with younger ministers, when we relate with prospective or promising ministers, how do the old Christian, the old believer, the old pastor, 
we relate to the young upcoming minister number one take out time to care for the younger promising ministers number two give the best parts to care for the physical needs of the younger ministers number three do not despise the calling of the younger ministers number four prepare to treat the younger ministers as you will do for the established ministers do not be discriminatory with your reception treat younger ministers with care for the almighty god is very keen about the progress in ministry show selfless love and administer the anointing on them with utmost cognizance that the younger ministers are on a mission just like you Prophet Samuel did not say well this young soul before me was going to be anointed king over israel of course he will be a minister in his own category in his own capacity i definitely not think right towards him let me not anoint him let him not, let me not treat him well let me put it aside let me show him aside and let us treat him with kind of disdain no it took out time to attend to Saul. It took out time. Now, we understand something very critical here because, number one, Samuel was old in age. And this Samuel was old in ministry, right from the cradle. It was in ministry. And here was Saul coming from a wonderful background. About children, there was no jealousy. There was no envy. There was no something like comparison. No, it was doing the bidding of the Almighty God. And the prayer points for you and I are, let us pray to have grace for the younger ministers with love. Let us pray to have the grace to give the best part of our possession to the younger ministers. We will look at our second green now. In Exodus 29 verse 1, And this is the thing that thou shalt do unto them to hallow them, to minister unto me in their priest's office. Take one young bullock and two rams without blemish. In Exodus 29 verse 30, And that son that is a priest in his stead shall put on on seven days, when he comment into the tabernacle of the congregation to minister in the holy place. That is also to point number two, the old ministerial attention to the yearning minister. The old ministerial attention to the yearning minister. You know what it means to yearn? Because you look at 1 Samuel chapter 9 verse 24, and the cook took up the shoulder and that which was upon it and set it before Saul. And Samuel said, Behold, that which is left, set it before thee and it. For unto this time had it been kept for thee since I said, I have invited the people. So Saul did eat for Samuel that day. Now you look at that action word, yearning. Now it signifies tiredness in need of rest. Number two, it signifies hunger in need of food or water. Number three, it signifies desire in need of elevation. Three aspects of yearning. Number one, it signifies tiredness, it signifies hunger, and then desire. And these three aspects of yearning also requires rest, it requires food or water, and then elevation, promotion in life. Saul was yearning for the above three components of improvement. Three companies. It was yearning for rest. It was yearning for refreshment. It was yearning for elevation because you understand, he had traveled a long distance to see Prophet Samuel. Now, Prophet Samuel had good knowledge of the state of Saul and paid the required attention to him. Firstly, he took the step by providing the chiefest place for him to sit down, as it was recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 20, that we saw last week. He sat down in the chiefest place, which means he was giving him that kind of yearning request of rest because of tiredness, because he was coming from a long distance. Now, secondly, he served him food and water to feed him in order to quench the hunger and the taste. Now, we can see that now in 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 24. Now, he was dealing with the second aspect of yearning, which means desire, hunger, in search of food and, and uh, water. Now, we shall be seeing the third aspect that Prophet Samuel will also fill in, which we'll see in coming weeks. And the third aspect is the, the last step of yearning, which is desire to be elevated. We shall see that in coming weeks because what is the elevation? Anointing for into the office of the higher calling. Now look at the three steps. Now number one, rest from tiredness. Two, feeding from hunger and thirst. And then three, anointing him for the work and the tax ahead. Now we'll see number one, rest from tiredness. That's physical need. Number two, feeding him. That's physical need. And then thirdly, it shall be spiritual. But sometimes today or in this dispensation, we'll put the spiritual before the physical. 
not knowing that God is very concerned about our physical desires, about our physical needs before the spiritual. Now, we cannot sweep the biblical lesson under the carpet when we are relating with one another. We can't sweep this kind of vital lessons that were somewhere demonstrated before Saul and that we are reading today. The word of the Almighty God is instructive. And we are commanded to heed its lines completely. It is wisdom to apply biblical practices to relevant activities we are engaged with daily. This is how to walk righteously before the Almighty God. When we walk and redesign our protocols or methodology, we drift away from God's instructions. In everything that is happening to us, they will look at the Bible days. How was it then? And then we we'll apply. That is walking righteously before the Lord because it is an open instruction. You can see how Prophet Samuel, the elderly prophet, the old prophet, treating the young minister. So you can see now how he treated him. You see how he took care of the physical needs and then the spiritual that we shall see later. And the Lord will help you and I that will have this kind of wisdom where we are dealing with people and we are dealing with the younger minister and vice versa. You see, Saul never refused the reception of old Samuel. He didn't say, well, I'm not going to sit down here because, you know, I have my choices place. That's not the place. I'm going to sit down elsewhere. He sat down. He obeyed the elderly prophet. And he didn't say, I'm not going to eat this, your food, because I, this is not the kind of food I eat way back at home. He obeyed in love. You see the mutuality now. The older prophet showing love and concern, empathy for the younger minister. And then the younger minister receiving from the older prophet. And then you see, after then, you see the anointing. And the Lord will help you. And the prayer points for you and I are, let us pray to obey the Almighty God always. Number two, let us pray to have the practical interests of younger ministers at heart. Selection and action point number one, prioritize the care of new ministers. Selection and action point number two, give the needed attention to young ministers as well as young believers to meet their physical needs. Selection and action point number three, be dedicated to meeting the needs of fellow ministers, believers. Selection and action point number four, give your best resources to the propagation of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Selection and action point number five, let the Almighty God see your genuine intention to please Him always. So the question to you and I is, are you treating younger ministers according to the biblical blueprint? And then we can also reverse it, are you according to the older ministers with a due respect? Wherever you are right now, if you are not yet a minister, or you are not a neophyte minister, or you are not a believer, the Lord is saying, I want you to be one now. Wherever you are right now, if you have not given your life to Christ, the Lord is saying, give your life to him now. If you want to give your life to Christ, and you say after me, Lord Jesus, I come before you. Have mercy upon me. Write my name in the book of life. And Lord, I promise you, I will not go back to evil anymore. And if I pray that prayer sincerely, congratulations in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know that you have answered. Any individual that has prayed that prayer sincerely, will pray, Lord, will be touched by your power of salvation in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know that you have done it. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray this week. This week, we'll receive the honor that is yours. We'll receive the, the, the wonderful physical attention from people, from impossible sources. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, because I know that you have done it. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Next week shall be power service. Thank you. God bless you. See you then. Thanks for listening to the message. The blessings await you as you obey and pray along. For any inquiry, partnership, and prayers, please check our YouTube page for contact as you click on the select icon. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified on upcoming videos. And do not forget to share. God bless you.